willing to battle any animal, the cougar attacks his victims with fang and claws as he fights to retain his rule over the wilderness. 200 Pounds of Sudden Death by Ferris Weddle appeared in Pioneer West Magazine of May 1968. A trapper in the remote Idaho primitive area was returning to his cabin on the Salmon River when he heard spine-tingling sounds, snarls, wails, hisses, and a hoarse growl and hoarse growls broke the wilderness stillness. With his rifle ready for action, the trapper climbed an incline overlooking a small clearing. His heart pounded a bit as he viewed the scene below. Two of the wild land's most majestic creatures were engaged in a duel, a huge cougar and an extra-large black bear, and it appeared to be a duel to the death. As the, as the battlers rolled in a confused tangle of slashing, fierce action, the trapper settled down to watch. He had heard many conflicting tales about the relative prowess of the cougar and the black bear. Now, perhaps, he had learned the truth. The blood-streaked appearance of the animals indicated the battle had been in progress for some time, and the entire terrain was torn up, shrubs flattened, great hunks of fur dangled from the bear, and the cat had long red slashes. The cougar also seemed to be favoring an injur injured front. Um, Twenty minutes later, the battle continued, but the bear was trying to escape, and each time, however, the cougar managed to stop the bear, dragging the larger animal down. Then the cat had the bear down, and was working at its throat with ripping fangs while powerful rear legs made vicious strokes. Within a few moments, the trapper knew the battle was near its end, and the cougar was the victor, although the cat was in bad shape too. The man ended the fight with the rifle he carried. Knowing that wild animals, even potential enemies, seldom engage in duels, the trapper walked to the pair to examine them. The cougar was a giant among his kind, weighing perhaps 200 pounds, and the bear, however, weighed 250 pounds more than the cougar, and both animals appeared to be in good physical shape. The trapper searched the area, trying to deter determine the reason for the unusual battle, and some distance away he found the carcass of a freshly killed deer. The manner of the killing indicated that the cougar had brought the deer down, and perhaps the bear had appeared after the kill and attempted to take it over and a fight resulted. The above incident, based on an actual case, is fairly rare in the lore of the cougar. It's possible that encounters between bears and cougars of a less fatal nature are more common than is known. Both animals inhabit a wilderness habitat, and there is considerable competition for certain kinds of food. The cougar, however, is the most efficient killer of game animals, such as deer and elk, and thus conflicts with bears attempting to steal the food catch are inve inevitable. While bears may be seen frequently by humans, cougars in the wild are sel seldom glimpsed by man unless they are chased down by dog packs. Perhaps you know the cougar by one of its many common names, mountain lion, puma, panther, uh, painter, and, and others. Whatever the name, it is the same species, Felis cancolor. Whether living in Florida's Everglades, the Idaho primitive areas, or the Grand Canyon country of Arizona, there are some 30 recognized types of cougars ranging from the southern Yukon Territory to Patagonia in South America. Thus the cougar is the widest ranging mammal in the New World and is second in size among the cats to the jaguar which ranges from Mexico southward. Infrequently, a jaguar wanders into the southwestern United States. And even though the jaguar is heavier, it is said that the lithe, supple cougar will usually, usually be the winner in battles between the two big cats. While the habitat of the animals overlap at times, the jaguar and cougar prefer to avoid trouble. Adult cougars average around 150 pounds in weight, although male cougars weighing 175 to 200 pounds are not rare. With its superb muscular control, sharp fangs and claws, and the ability to leap long distances, the cougar is a powerhouse of concentrated energy capable of killing adult horses, moose, and elk. The big cats almost invariably stalk their prey from the ground and not from trees as popular myth has it. They use patience and stealth to get within 20 feet or so of an intended victim and then spring with powerful leaps and bounds aiming for the victim's neck and shoulders. The specific target 
is the vulnerable spinal column. In cases of young deer or elk, the neck may be broken by the combination of the cat's weight and a twisting motion. The cougar is by no means always successful in his attack. He may try several times before bringing down his prey because he has a small lung capacity which prevents his chasing a victim for long distances. Therefore, <clears throat> the cat has to make good on his first lunge. Sometimes the attacker ends up the victim. <clears throat> I heard of an elk in Idaho's primitive area that got the best of an attacking cougar. The bull elk, bleeding from claw marks, ran into the corral area of the wilderness ranch, apparently terrified. Ranch hounds backed backtracked the elk and found a dead cougar with numerous hoof and antler marks. It appeared to, to the ranch hands that the elk had managed to stun the cat by dashing it in, into a small pine tree. There have been many cases of deer escaping cougars. In a Montana incident, both the deer, a large buck, and the cougar rolled off a bluff. Only the deer walked away. The cat had a broken neck. Cougars also have been known to get broken legs when attacking deer and elk. A male moose may weigh from 1,200 to 1,500 pounds, so this largest member of the deer family offers a real challenge for any attacking animal. But in deep snow or in other um, favorable positions, the cougar can kill an adult moose, although the smart cat tries to locate younger, smaller moose. Accounts of bouts between grizzly bears and cougars are, are meager. Since the grizzly was and is the most savage and powerful fighter among the wild animals, it isn't surprising that the cougars avoid the mean-tempered king of the wilderness. A much smaller mammal, but with the grizzly's temperament, is also usually avoided by cougars and the other wild animals. This animal seldom weighs over 40 pounds, but if dynamite comes in small packages, it is the wolverine or the carcajou. A member of the weasel family, the wolverine is considered one of nature's most awe-inspiring battlers. There have been several instances observed by naturalists wherein uh, cougars have given way to, wolverines, to wolverine at kills. Because of their habitat preference, cougars seldom come in, came in contact with the giant bovines which roamed our country millions in the bison or buffalo. Wolves and packs and uh, through relay methods, did feed on buffaloes, and a few frontiersmen among them, Daniel Boone, witnessed cougar attacks on buffaloes, but such confrontations were rare. As strictly fresh meat eaters, cougars have tested their fangs and claws on many kinds of domestic animals, including horses, cattle, sheep, goats, and pigs. Horses raising in the open range days was often a difficult business because of marauding cats and grizzly bears. Some of these animals, which were given the label of predators, became addicted to horse flesh, eating it to the exclusion of all other kinds of prey. Cougars went after colts whenever possible, but adult horses were sometimes killed by the cats. The fierce wild stallions, as tough as rawhide, were usually avoided, and most of the time the stallions could protect their bands. Mules were even more capable of fending off cougar attacks, and so were the tough little burrow jacks. Cougars often paid with their lives in attacking these formerly domestic animals gone wild, and the domestic pig turned wild was also a formidable enemy. Among cattle, a wiry longhorn was a match for almost anything, man or beast. No doubt cougars occasionally killed calves or lone adults, but such prey was really um, earned. Can we conclude then that the cougar is the champion of the wilderness domain? The only safe conclusion is this. Most of the time the cougar can take care of its natural enemies and the prey it chooses for its existence. Considerable prudence enters into the choices, except in exceptional cases. Man with his dog packs is the cougar's worst enemy, and the majority of hunters who have chased the big cats say they are cowardly beasts. They point out that the cougar almost never attempts to attack, even when cornered, and it may appear terrified by the dogs. Actually, cougars don't fear dogs. It is the dog's master, man, that the big cats fear. Many lion hunters have had their lion dogs killed by cougars, and the cats have been known to deliberately ambush dogs or lure them from their camps. Through the years of relentless pursuit, the cougar has learned his lesson well, and it pays to be wary of the two-legged hunter. Today, the cougar population is concentrated in the western states and in western Canada. Numbers are either dwindling, <clears throat> um, 
are barely holding steady. At one time, the majority of states bountied uh, the big cats. Only Arizona does so today, at the time of this print writing. Game animal status has been given to the cats in Colorado, Washington, Nevada, Oregon, Utah, and British Columbia. It is due to come in Idaho, New Mexico, California, and Montana. Florida gives out... Um, Florida gives outright protection to its few panthers. Courageous at times, cowardly at times, the cougar adds richness to our wilderness country and should be allowed to survive.